I remember reading it and not wanting to read anymore. A lot of people try to turn away from having a problem and not wanting to have it fixed. And I think that's, that's just how people are. I always knew that something was wrong as the, the years went by and my symptoms got worse. That's when I knew that I had to be checked because I, I kept ignoring it. Music is relaxing. Music is, is me. I've been singing since I was about 12 years old. Being a singer opened up a lot of opportunities to perform through acting, through, through dancing, and that's how I became a company member of Pasaka, the Philippine Performing Arts Company. Whenever I sing at church um, and I stand in the front, I noticed people were looking and noticing that I had a problem. And so they saw that my, my head was tilting in and my shoulders were protruding forward. When people started noticing, that's when I knew that something had to be done. The condition I was diagnosed with is called cervical dystonia. It's basically when your muscles involuntarily contract and there's a lot of excessive pulling to the shoulders and to the neck. They're moving in different ways when you don't want them to. So with that comes a lot of pain and a lot of tremors and occasional spasms. I wasn't really aware of what it was. I was wondering, was like, what do I do now? Like, what if I have this and how do I find out? After doing a lot of research online and reading about it, that's how I became more familiar with what it was. I think it's vital that we need to learn about our health. I was no longer afraid of talking about it. And I ended up talking about it on one of the biggest things I've done in my life, which was American Idol. And when you go through an audition process and you go through people judging you, of course they're going to notice that something might be wrong with you. I took it upon myself, okay, I'm going to tell you about it. Doing the TV show was actually good in many aspects. Other people heard my story. That's when I started looking up what is an e-patient and what I learned is that you have to be engaged. If you can't find it from the doctors, you got to look it up yourself. You got to take the initiative. I'm, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Tumblr, but I never thought of using it to better my health. I was able to find the Cervical Dystonia Support Forum on Facebook. There are people on there that are exactly going through what you're going through. We can have medicine and we can have different things to try and be better, but there's people there listening to you. There's people who understand and that's a great feeling. Ladies and gentlemen, our next set of speakers are e-patients. Give a warm welcome to our first e-patient speaker, Marvin Calderon, Jr. It was about my third or fourth session of physical therapy. My amazing PT, Annie, did her usual process of questions of how I'm feeling and the rundown of the session for that day. She looked to her right, looked at me, looked to her right again, and then asked, did you meet Betsy beside you? I'm usually in my own world at physical therapy, so it caught me off guard. Betsy and her sweet soul introduced herself as her shoulders were tied back, ice severely twitching and severely shaking. My PT said, did you want to tell her why you're here? I told her I was just diagnosed with this thing called cervical dystonia. Betsy grinned and said, I've had cervical dystonia for a very long time. Immediately I was floored because I got to meet someone who had the same neurological disorder as me. We clicked, and then it crossed my mind how I come here to stretch and exercise while she comes here to, for her shoulders to be tied and have uncontrollable movements. So it crossed my mind, is this me in the future? This was the first time we met, but she opened up her heart and she said, do not let this stop you. Do not let it take over you and do what you love. And that stuck with me. A couple more weeks and a couple more sessions, my PT told me, Marvin, when Betsy saw you doing your session, 
She said she wanted to add more to hers. And she's never done that. You gave her that push. Such a simple story, but I was moved. How could I, an inexperienced newbie to this invisible rare disorder, help someone who's been dealing with it for all their life? Then I remembered she told me, do what you want to do in life. At that point, I realized I can influence another person without even doing it on purpose. What can happen when I actually try? I recently started learning about my role as an e-patient and what it means to be empowered, to be engaged. I found a home within the Cervical Dystonia Support Forum on Facebook, and I connected to hundreds of other dystoniacs. I loved reading about their own remedies and their own ways to get better. It was more than physical therapy, and it was more than the 15 to 25 Botox shots that I would get to my neck and shoulders in one sitting. It was more than that. I thought, what can I do? And I came to a realization that I've been doing it all along. You must share with others your story. And that was the best thing I learned. Oddly enough, the first time I really shared about my dystonia was in front of cameras and in front of strangers on a television show. I thought, I'm nervous, this is ridiculous, why now? But why not? Why not share my story? I told people about dystonia while telling people that it's okay. God blessed me with music, and I've been singing since I was little, and it's helped me grow and learn, especially throughout this cervical dystonia journey. My mom, dad, my brother, and my sister, who believe in me, let me do what I love to do. They wanted me to stand out. Singing led me to Pasakat, the loving Philippine culture arts troupe, that helped me turn the pain in my neck and my shoulders into dance movements and motions that dig deep into my roots and deep into my heart. Now it was more than my tilting neck and my contorted appearance that made me stand out. Every rehearsal I get to exercise and I get to stretch and I get to smile and I get to learn the movements while I strengthen my muscles, my health and my heart. As an e-patient, I learned that it's vital to have knowledge of your disease and to know that we are e-patients for different reasons. We have different things that work for us, and it's essential to find out what works for you, hold on to it, and to use it. For me, I know that there is this beautiful human connection to singing and music, and there is power in finding what you love and using it in a positive way. I think this deserves attention. Something you love can be your therapy. Overall, an e-patient needs to find what they love and apply it to their lifestyle to grow and to improve. I always remind myself, let your capabilities rise rather than decline. Music in itself is healing, and music has been my tool. It is a tool to reach my goals and lead me to the outcomes that I want in life. Music, arts, and dance are my therapy. As dystonia advocate Rogers Hartman said, dystonia bent my body, but not my spirit. Through my singing, through my voice and the strength of a microphone, through the sounds of percussion and the sounds of string instruments, as I step on stage of a Philippine folk dance floor, and when I sing, I continue to heal. My soul continues to heal. I have found my medicine. I am an e-patient that searched for my remedy, and I am an e-patient that found it. I found it. To all e-patients, have you found yours? Thank you. Thank you.